Well, good damn afternoon, Americans. Jericho Green here with you once again. Welcome, bienvenue. Yes, I noticed no glasses today because they were pissing me off. Kept getting fogged up. I couldn't get them clean. So I'm flying blind. Just kidding. I can see very well. I'm just supposed to use the glasses for reading and screen time. <clears throat> That's right. This mug right here. Shout out to my man, Brian Hendricks. He ordered his be like B -B Brian. This mug and much more available on mine or at mygreengear.gov. I didn't have time <clears throat> to uh, get a new background, so you're just going to have to suffer through that little hottie right there for another day. Tammy A., she ordered one. Damn it, Tammy, I knew you had my back like a chiropractor. Thank you so much. Oh, that's Rad TV. What up? Thursday, you guys got to wake up, and it's Friday. What you going to do this weekend, huh? What you going to do? What you going to do? Don't know yet? It's okay. <clears throat> you don't need to know. You still got another day. Or maybe you do. Maybe you, your weekend is already planned. That's why we need a three-day weekend. You need time to do what you got to do. You need time to go where you need to go. And you need a day to chill. Just need a day to fucking chill. Brian King B. Falcon, what up? Oscar, what up? Nicholas Snowman. Um, <clears throat> Josh Jackson, who is that? <laughs> well, Josh. Let me show you. Well, let me explain first. So, all last month, Black History Month, right? My background was kente cloth. So all of Women's Heritage Month, which we're in right now, you should know that, Josh Jackson. You should have been an ally this whole month. But I, uh, for every day, I have a background where I have uh, a woman, right? Because now to be a woman, you just... You just got to feel it like, well, okay, this is what I'm going to do. It's a, it's a vibe, but being a woman, it's just a vibe. How do you feel? Ooh. So if you feel you're a woman, you're a woman. And this one, this used to be a woman, but now she's a man. Urgh. It used to be Ellen Page, but now this is Elliot Page. All right. And you better be concerned. You better be fearful, fellas. When you see this walking down the street, look at this ripped physique. Look at it. Never mind the scars underneath her breast where she had her tits thrown in the trash for no reason. You just keep your eyes on those eyes. Look at those are the eyes of a man. Look at that six pack. She even got the root at the bottom, the dick root, the cum gutters, you know, the things at the hips. Fellas, when you see that walking down the street, you better step aside unless you want to get fucked up. She used to be a woman. She was tired of that. She was trapped in the wrong body. Now she's Elliot Page, and she'll kick your ass. All five foot one, 95 pounds. <laughs> so, Josh Jackson, that's why you see a fucking hottie like that in the background. Ugh. My bad. Shouldn't have called her a hottie. Mm. That was gross. Yeah, you guys never heard that cum gutters. You know, the, look at the the on the hips. Look at the hips. Oh, you can't really see it. The picture doesn't go down far enough. Good for you. You don't have to see it. But in a different picture, you can see the the dick root. Huh? <clears throat> so yeah, that's the new man and the new woman. It's whatever. What do you feel like? What do you feel like today? Just like when you're asking somebody like what they want to eat. Or what do you feel like today? What do you feel like being? Because it's that simple. It's interchangeable. We're all Mr. Potato Heads. Just swap them out. You want a clam today? You want a dick? You want a sausage? Or you want a fucking clam? Don't matter. However you feel. Uh, Fonduki. Thank you. Did you see the clip of Big D Mulvaney <laughs> on True? You can't see, and that's a perfect example of the new woman, Dylan Mulvaney. 
he is the new woman because he has on his little TikTok, he's all 365 days as a girl. So you put on some rouge and a dress and you're a woman now. It's that simple. I did see that. I talked about it yesterday, I think. And I did check out my YouTube page. I did a short about it too. But when she's kneeling, when she's on her knees, on both knees in front of a man. You know what that means, Drew? Or, uh, yeah, yeah, Drew, Barry, Miss Barrymore. You know what that means when you get on your knees in front of a man? Never mind. <clears throat> GJB Films. Thank you. Currently at the locker room at work, about to go home to my birthday with the family. Keep uh, keep being the Jericho Green we all know and love. Uh, man, I'm not changing. If I haven't changed yet, I'm not going to. Happy birthday to you, man. Uh, how old are you today? <clears throat> And enjoy your time with your family. Isn't that a, a, a good feeling? Isn't that a wonderful feeling to be excited to go home, to be with your family and celebrate your birthday? And when you're a parent, you can't not celebrate your birthday because your kids are more excited about your birthday than you are. So happy birthday, GJB Films. And if you're in the locker room at work, you got any non-binary Ku Klux trans women in there? Probably not because it only goes one way. You don't ever hear about no men complaining about some woman, some biological woman being in the locker room because that shit don't happen. It's always some dude transitioning into a woman trying to be up in the women's locker room. Dirty mother, dirty motherfucker. <laughs> Remember, uh, was that the Chappelle show where they had they were making fun of Sesame Street and all the puppets were STDs? And uh, I think it was crabs or something. Or a chlamydia. And he goes, "Hey, Dave, haven't seen you in a while." Dirty motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man these people suck don't they don't they and uh let's see here i believe miss creo lady you are the super chat cherry popper i thank you very much and she says great way to get through jg we do what we can miss creo lady thank you for breaking that financial hymen See, we got a couple more. We got a couple more. Boom, careless. What's going on? Thank you. Um, who would make the best real life female villain in a movie? Jill Biden, Jada Pinkett, or Gabrielle Union? That's easy. Gabrielle Union, because Gabrielle Union is the only one of these three evil bitches that has harmed a child. Because what she's doing to Zion Wade is child abuse. Child abuse does not always come in the form of a fist. She is mentally uh, and physically abusing this child, forcing him to be a girl, forcing him to dress like one. And now he's some kind of fucking activist. Now he's saying, we're here. We're not going anywhere. So now he's there. They moved into the activist, uh, the activist face of the Ku Klux trans phase of their destruction plan of this little boy. So I think she's by far the worst. By far, she's destroying a child. You sick fuck and his eunuch, neutered, Ken doll crotch piece of shit father is just standing there, going out there on stage talking about my baby girl. And it's your fucking baby girl. That's going to be your baby boy that you're putting in the ground if you keep pushing this shit. You check the suicide rate, you dumbasses. Of course not. They're too busy being woke. Jada Pinkett, she comes in second place because she <laughs> has neutered her husband multiple times in front of the world. But again, Will Smith is a dumbass because you're putting up with it. You're Will Smith. Do you know what you can do with that? Will Smith being in this bullshit relationship, getting his getting kicked in his nuts every day by this little ball-headed midget. Is like Superman saying, ah, fuck it. I'm not going to fly. I'm not going to use my uh, my uh, x-ray vision or my laser eyes and shit like that. My, my, my speed, strength. No, I'm just going to be a regular guy. I'm going to work a nine to five. Why are you wasting all that power and ability? You're Will Smith. You got money. You're good looking. You're famous. You could fuck anything that moves. Nope. You're at home shackled to the wall in the basement while your, your wife boss and your two weird fucked up kids walk around upstairs. You piece of shit. 
And Jill Biden, she's number three because she's abusing another adult, but they are an adult, so you can't have too much sympathy for them. Although abusing the elderly is wrong, but she's not alone. But definitely Gabrielle Union. That bitch is a real life witch. She's she's ex the in real life. She's a character that she plays in movies. Have you guys ever seen that movie Deliver Us from Eva? She was a mean anti man bitch in that movie. Every movie she's in, she plays the same part and she plays it in real life. Maybe that's why she's so good at it. Bryant Lawson. Thank you. Jericho, are you aware of the whatever YouTube channel? No, I'm not. And the video that went viral, sleep with the oldest woman or hottest trans woman. Ugh. Oh, come on, man. There's no question. I'm sleeping with the oldest. I mean, we're going to need uh, some kind of lubricant down there because it's dusty. It's old. It doesn't self-moisturize anymore. Whatever. I'll take it. It's a woman. If you're a straight man, you have a strict one dick policy. When we get down with the get down, there can only be one penis involved, real rubber or anything else. One. I brought it. So you can't, I don't need yours. If you got one, keep it moving, player. Fuck care. What ladyboy shit you do to that man, that's a man. When we get down to it, strip it down. There's going to be two dicks in here. Can't have it. Oldest woman in the world, bring it on, lady. Geritol, mothballs, I don't give a fuck what you got. Bring it. Because there's no way. <laughs> there's no way <laughs> in hell that I would do that. Oh, my goodness. Hell no. Um, AJ Salas. Thank you. That's the nickname for the town I used to live in, Salinas. They call it Salas. Puro Salas, way. Puro Salas por vida, fucker. Mr. Kojak, who loves you, baby. Uh, hope that person is ready for the toxic male white patriarchy criticism to roll in. Exactly. Elliot, Elliot, Ellen Page, now Elliot Page, you decided to be a cisgender white male or white male. I don't know how, what's going on. Do you like, uh, well, obviously she's into women, but you're, you're basically a white dude now. And I thought that was taboo in Hollywood. I thought you, I thought the worst thing you could be was a white a uh, white man. But apparently not. Apparently it's okay when they want to do it. Got it. That's why I stay away from them. They're too gross and fucked up. Thank you, Mr. Kojak. I think we got a new member. Cool kids, you ready to stand up? Hope your legs aren't falling asleep. You're going to have to stand up for a minute. Cuz we got a new member. A new member. Of Green Nation. <laughs> uh, hold on. There it is. Diesel. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Diesel. 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 Appreciate that, man. Welcome to Green Nation. Cool kids. Trays up. Scoot it. Sidestep. Sidestep. Move it over. Have a seat, Diesel. You're all right. Uh, doji dude, how's your day, Jericho? Pretty good so far, man. How about you? How about you, mother sucker? Old sweet Dick Malone, no surprise here, not hating at all. He says, I bang old chicks all the time. Get it, man. They deserve it too. Old ladies deserve to get some, definitely before a, a, a Ku Klux trans member. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> okay, where were we, guys? Oh, yeah, we got one more up here. Bam, Brian Hendricks. What's up, Brian? Says, thank you for the Hamilton. He says, Jericho Green Enterprises, Green Nation, where rational, common sense folks go to be entertained by his view of upside down clown world. It sure is. His view of granola headed dirt fuckers. The Ku the Klux Trans. He says the Ku Crump Tram. Whatever you call them, they're fucked up. Thank you, Brian. And I am, I'm still um, trying to find somewhere to get my cards laminated because I, I came up and a uh, shout out to Ash. She wrote it for me or drew it for me. I thought of the, I had came up with the concept. She put, uh, put it on paper. So I'm trying to find somebody to laminate them because I have Jericho green cards. And here, let me... Uh, OK, 
Okay. I'll read to you what it says. <clears throat> I won't show you yet. I'll just read what's on it. But <clears throat> it's a Jericho green card. You're part of the Jericho green card commission. And it says the holder of this card is 100% American. If you are in the possession of this card, you are impervious to leftist bullshit. And a green card carrier also believes in the First and Second Amendment family, and you have a compelling urge to tell the government to fuck off. <laughs> That's something you want to be a part of? I will have them soon. I just have to find someone to laminate them so I can send them out because I don't want to send you a, like a, a piece of paper. That shit will get all messed up. But that's what it says on the green card. I think we can all we can all <laughs> agree with that, right? Uh, but I like the design, very cool. Just gotta find some way to get them laminated or someone to laminate them. I guess I could, but that just sounds like a lot of extra work. And if I'm doing that, I can't be here with you. So we'll see, I'll figure that shit out. <laughs> but, and I want it to be on, it has to be on green paper because it's a green card. So I will figure that out. I will get the cards um, cards out for the Jericho Green Card Commission. Heidi Booth, she says, love the new mug, JG. You got it? Cool. Hey, cheers to you, Heidi. Booyakasha. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Appreciate it. DMW 24-7 TV. Welcome. Good to see you. <clears throat> so let's see. See him. A lot of shit to talk about. And the reason that I put the uh um the picture, the thumbnail of the nuclear explosion, the mushroom cloud, and I've always been fascinated by the nuclear explosions, just seeing that mushroom cloud and seeing the destruction of it, it just Thank you, uh, Marvin Elkins Jr. Thank you. I thought it was a pretty good idea myself. I can't wait to actually see him. Um, Josh Jackson, get out of here. No Pokemon card. <laughs> Pokemon card. <laughs> <clears throat> but I've all for some reason I've just I've always been fascinated by that. Heidi Booth, I prefer the mushroom tip. Not me. I prefer to gaze upon the cloud. You take the tip, I'll take the cloud. But uh I've, for some reason, I've just always been fasc fascinated by that. And not only it's just um, it's like being just in awe of that cloud, how high it goes in the air and the fire and the destruction of it. that shit's always just, it's blown my mind to, to see it. And hold on one second. Angel Hughes, you're right. She says, enjoying the live, but you haven't subscribed. Go ahead, subscribe, and while you're there, consider getting membership to Green Nation. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Angel. Um, but that's that shit's always fascinated me, and, and to see that, just the destruction, and also, it's mind blowing that, and not that I disagree with America using the nuke. We had to, but it's just amazing our capacity for violence upon each other because that nuclear bomb was a son bitch and the second one the one they dropped to nagasaki so nagasaki was a secondary target they were going to bomb a bigger city i can't remember if it was going to be tokyo or what but they were going to bomb a different target but the weather was bad there was a lot of cloud cover so they were actually leaving going back to base and they saw uh, an opening in the clouds and it happened to be over um, over Nagasaki but Nagasaki was in a valley so when they dropped the nuke they dropped it to where the side of the mountain one of the sides of the valley took most of the blast so it wasn't as destructive as they wanted it to be um, so had it been a clear day they would have nuked somewhere else and would have been Hiroshima and something else but since they saw the opening they figured fuck it we got it out here let's drop it and they dropped it on Nagasaki, but fortunately for them, the blast, the mountain took most of the blast, so they didn't have the body count. And <clears throat> uh, there were more deaths 
in the fire bombings of Tokyo than the nuclear bombings. Take that to your next party. So uh, the reason I titled it World War III, anyone, is because what up, authentically, Kennedy? Get in here. Um, Lindsey Graham wants to fight. Senator Lindsey Graham thinks that we should be shooting down Russian <laughs> fighter planes because they took out uh, one of our drones. Remember the drone over the Black Sea? Uh, they dumped fuel and they allegedly dumped fuel on it and ran into it to knock it down. And the footage shows that. And I'll show you that first before we get into what Lindsey Graham said. But um, he thinks and he, he asked, what would Reagan do? And he thinks we should we should have shot down the Russian plane. But the only difference is, Lindsay, you idiot, is that their fighter jet had a pilot in it and ours was just a drone. So I don't think we should go to war with Russia because that's what would happen. What the fuck do you think Vladimir Putin would do if you shot down a Russian fighter jet? We've already gone up there we've already walked up to the hornet's nest and slapped it with a fucking branch by backing ukraine but you want to shoot down one of his fighter jets with a human inside because they knocked a robot out of the sky that doesn't make sense why would you be so gung-ho about going to war with russia why didn't you see what the last guy did the last that bad orange motherfucker that you hate he did four years without starting no bullshit during his four years, Russia was like, okay, all right, hey, okay. But as soon as, as oh, what, got in the office, of course they're going to start acting up. Well, how does the saying go? When the cat's away, the mice will invade shit, right? Pretty sure that's how it goes. But you can see in the footage that, and to hear it is one thing, to hear that Russia, the the jet dumped fuel on it and then ran into it and knocked it out of the sky collided with it but when you actually see it the level of disrespect is so obvious for you to for those jets to fly by and dump their fuel on them it's almost like they're pissing on them it was like those jets lifted their leg and pissed on that drone and then ran into it and knocked it out of the fucking sky and why wouldn't they what is there to be afraid of Nothing. What's going to happen? You're going to get on the phone with, uh, hello. <laughs> Derek Molino, R. Kelly jets. <laughs> yeah, those jets definitely R. Kelly'd our drone. They gave it a golden shower. Uh, Nelly Mac 91, good to see you in here. He says, isn't that Russian territory? No, apparently it was over international waters. So uh, it was, you know, free for anybody to be flying there. But when you see it, you can see the disrespect. Why would, why would Russia be afraid? Why wouldn't they do that? Because there's nothing to worry about. Like, what the, what the fuck? What's he going to do? Nothing? What did he do to stop you from invading Ukraine, nothing. And why did you invade Ukraine? You invade Ukraine because you knew that old mushmouth son of a bitch was gonna do nothing. Man, who in the who in this country, who in this world, thinks that Biden is doing a better job? Who? I'll tell you who. Kamala's dumbass. She got up. She was on a. Uh, the Colbert, was it the Colbert show? Stephen Colbert show? That fucking idiot. And she said that Biden is a wonderful leader and he's making decisions that nobody else in America could make. You damn right, girl. There's nobody else in America who would make the decisions that that old fucker does. For sure. That's the first correct thing you've ever let come out of that old dick sucking mouth of yours. And I don't mean Kamala's mouth is old. I mean, she sucks old dicks. Authentically, Kennedy, I don't need that type of play behavior coming from you. I expect it from other people. I expect it from Rex Rocker or Sweet Dick Malone, old Sweet Dick, but I don't expect it from you. Let me tell you guys what Authentically Kennedy just said. She said, Jericho, where are your glasses? Can you see us okay? <laughs> yeah, I see you just fine. 
If you guys aren't going to be nice to me, I'm going to leave. Okay. <laughs> I did not come here. <clears throat> I did not come here for this. There we go. I almost lost it. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see you just fine. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you the footage of the uh, the Russian jets, MIGs. I don't know if they are, but to me, growing up in the '80s, Russian jets will always be MIGs. So you see the Russian jet fly toward the drone, and you see it dumping fuel, and then you see it collide, and the camera kind of goes fucked up. So I'm I'm assuming that's the moment that uh, the drone takes a shit in the ocean. But it's definitely more disrespectful when you see it. <laughs> I mean, just it it could be nothing else but that. If they didn't want the drone there and they wanted to take it out, they would have shot it down or, you know, with the machine gun on it or they would have hit it with a missile. But they didn't. They dumped fuel on it. They raised their leg on that drone and ran into it. Knocked it out of the fucking sky. The lack of respect is obvious. Let's see. Where'd it go? Yeah, hold on. Hold up. Man, I have shit. Oh, I know who has it. I know who has it. Oh, Lord. There's a, a still pic of Kamala Harris laughing. Ugh. <laughs> <Ew. Yeah. laughs> Just so fucking infuriating to see her face. Just to see her face makes me angry. Anybody else feel that way? Anybody else upset just by the mere sight of Kamala's face? Ugh. Anybody else just <laughs> angered by the mere sight of that idiot? I am. Okay. Bam. So here we go. I will uh, share the uh, screen with you, my friend. Bam. So this is via the New York Post. All right. I'm going to shake it out. So the jet's coming up on them. A little dump right there, a little leg lift. And boom. So it flew over it that time. You can see the fuel behind it. So it looks like the drone is still intact. Everything's okay so far. And here comes number two. Leg lift. Boom. And I think that's when it goes down. So is somebody uh, in here with some flight experience is that something you do a, f a fuel dump <laughs> in the middle of the sky <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> what else why else would that happen that shit is so crazy uh-oh cool kids I'm sorry you're right in the middle of your meal you probably just sat down and got comfortable after the last cool kid uh, came and sat down at the table, but looks like you're going to have to stand up one more time. This time. Yes. Yes. Number one. American Rob. Thank you for becoming a member of Green Nation. Trays up. Scoot it. Sidestep. Sidestep. Here we go. All right, guys. Have a seat. Welcome, number one, Rob. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Uh, Strider Shadow says, uh, jets always dump fuel before a carrier landing. Yes. 
but not usually in the sky. <laughs> While you're doing a mission, you don't usually, yeah, let's get rid of this fuel. I don't want to make it back to base. So, but why not? And would that have happened under Trump? You know, good and fucking well that wouldn't happen. None of this would. We would be $200 billion richer, at least, under Trump because we wouldn't have hemorrhaged that shit to that cokehead in Ukraine. But that's neither here nor there. Tommy, karate. Whoa! Tommy, Tommy. That's right. Thank you, Tommy Karate. Trays up, cool kids. Move it. Sidestep it. Boom. We got another member. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for joining Green Nation. Oh, Tommy Karate says, make a hole and make it wide. He's coming through. Tommy gets friction on him on a pickle jar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Max Bang says it was cat piss. <laughs> And what's funny, oh, it's not really funny, but people, even people who don't like Trump, even people who hate Trump, even the never Trumpers have to know that this never would have happened under him. No way. He just didn't, he just didn't put off that kind of vibe. Some people, you just know not to fuck with them. You, do, you won't even try it on them. You're going to take the path of least resistance and he's not it. Just think of, of where we would be had we never gotten into Ukraine. This wouldn't even be, this wasn't even an issue. Russia was doing what they do and Ukraine was doing what they do like they were before a year ago. But no, no, we had to get sloppy Joe in there. Mr. Kojak again, thank you. Tried to dump fuel on it and light it up with afterburner. That would have been, that would have been a cool trick. And maybe that's exactly what they were trying to do. That would have been a cool trick. And to be honest, am I mad at am I mad at Russia for taking out a US drone? No, I'm not. I could give a shit. No human, no American lives were lost, so I don't fucking care. You basically ruined some of our computer equipment. I'm not mad at that. That's not good enough to go to war, Lindsey Graham. You want to go to war with Russia? with another nuclear power because they took out one of our unmanned, unmanned aircraft. That's fucking stupid. But again, if you don't live with the consequences of your policies, why not? You think his kids, his grandkids or whatever are going to fight in it? Hell no. Send yours, why not? They ain't his. You cock soccer. You cock soccer. So let's see here. Okay, so here is Lindsey Graham I Am. For the Republicans. And this was on uh, Tucker Carlson last night. I think last night. One more second. Lindsey Graham I Am. You little bastard. Okay, here's what he says. If you ever get near another uh, U.S. set flying in international waters, your airplane would be shot down. What would Ronald Reagan do right now? He would he would start shooting Russian planes down if they were threatening our assets. What? <laughs> he said, we should be telling Putin that if you do that shit again, we're going to shoot down your aircraft. What would Ronald Reagan do? Ronald Reagan would be shooting down Russian aircraft. No, he wouldn't. He didn't get us in any wars when he was president. So no, he wouldn't. And I don't understand why you would think that's a good idea unless you could profit from it in some way. It might not be money, but it probably is. It could be in other ways. But unless you're benefiting from us going to war, there's no fucking reason because I seriously doubt it's because you care about the safety of America and you want to make sure we're safe and make sure the rest of the world knows it. That's bullshit. You don't care about America. You don't give a fuck about America. None of you do. There's a, a baby-sized handful of you elected officials that really care. And we could probably count them on one hand. Maybe two. We wouldn't have to take our shoes off. That's for sure. 
but you're not pushing you're not pushing this war with with Russia because you care about America. That's not even on your list of priorities. Never mind being at the top. We don't even make the list. Washing his balls is ahead of us on the priority list. So unless you benefit from it in some way, why would you want to push us into a war with Russia? There is no other reason. I can hear the OJs right now. Money, 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 money. You hear them? Money. Yep, I hear it. That's what it's about. It's not about us, you fucking asshole. The nerve. He said, we should be shooting down Russian aircraft. No, we should not. Now, you take an American life, you take out one of our aircraft that has a human inside of it, Russia, then we got a fucking problem. Then we got to start talking about whooping your ass because you took one of our own. But as long as you're knocking out our remote control fucking vehicles piloted by some, some nerd in an air-conditioned trailer in Denver, Colorado somewhere, I don't care. I don't. They didn't have a problem shooting uh, missiles at $400,000 a pop at some fucking balloon. So I don't care if you take out one of our drones. Now, don't make a habit of it. But taking out a drone is not cause for World War III. You dumbass. Max Bang, thank you for the Hamilton. Sorry, JG. All I can say is Joe Biden has to go. Our American citizens are suffering under his non-policies, and now what a joke he is. Love you, bro. Um, you don't have to be sorry for that. I believe everybody up in this some bitch, everybody watching this thinks the same damn thing. Biden has to get the fuck out of here. But will he? He's certainly going to have the support. Yeah, uh, Latvarian won. Reagan was not a warmonger. He wasn't. I'd, I'd take some Reagan right now. If we had another Reagan and then uh, Trump gets in another four years and then we go to eight years of a Reagan, yeah, I'm down. Rising Phoenix, war is very lucrative. That's why they want it. We, go, we should go to war because of a loss of American life or a threat to our safety. That's why we should go to war. Or uh, if, some, if one of our allies is getting fucked up. But because you're taking out unmanned equipment, no, don't send my my fellow American citizens over there to die for who knows how long. This could be another 20-year bullshit Iraq-Afghanistan debacle. And then the slap in the face to all those who were hurt, who served, who died, their families, the way we pulled out of there. There's a 17-year-old on prom night who has a better pull-out game than that fucking sloppy son of a bitch. All that, and we just drrr, leave him $85 billion worth of fun and adventure? You're out of your mind. Oh, Thomas Bailey. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Thomas Bailey, are you saying that Lindsey Graham... Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So they dropped Reaper drones on women and children in Afghanistan. Yeah, it was all bad, man. It wasn't despite um, despite our possession of precision-guided munitions. And I don't think it's so much the munitions. I don't think that our, our bombs and stuff were malfunctioning. I think that they were just dropped in a lot of the wrong places. Because Obama, who, there's a reason that uh, now I understand why they named him Obama. Because nobody dropped more bombs than that son of a bitch. Luke literally says, my pullout game is not on point. What, what man's pullout game is on point? Because by the time you feel like you got to go, hey, uh, you've already, there's already stuff coming out. By the time you get that feeling, by the time that feeling starts coming up your thighs, <laughs> and you're about to go, hey, uh, you've already leaked in there, man. No man has a good pullout game. It's not designed that way. Harry Blog says Black Sea is 3,900 feet deep. It might take a while. But man, who knows what they're going to find? Fucking assholes. We can't believe shit from them. 
Bam Bam Bigelow pulling out is an unnatural act. It sure is, man, because the way that clay, way that fucking clam is set up, set up to leave it in there. Ooh, ooh, feels good. <laughs> Bitter 101 says, need some, some pasta mania, brother. <laughs> yeah. We fucking, last night it was, there was a lot of Hulk Hogan coming through and this is a real thing, guys. I didn't, I didn't even know this until Gabe showed us like a few weeks ago. I didn't even know this existed and this is a real thing. This is a <laughs> real fucking thing and I can't believe I didn't know about it until weeks ago. Being a hardcore wrestling fan and all that shit. <laughs> this is real. Have I shown you guys this before? I think I probably have now that I'm pulling it up. I'm going to show you again anyway. I didn't even know this shit was a real thing until weeks ago. But this this is just a testament to the 80s and how popular Hulk Hogan was. This is some real shit. Pasta mania. I don't know if it was like a chain of restaurants or what. Hulk Hogan. Here, let me get so you can see the whole thing. There you go. See that bowl right there? Because he's Italian. Hulk Hogan's Italian. His name's like Terry something. It's like an Italian last name. I don't even remember. It's Hulk Hogan to me. But yeah, straight up. Look at that shit. That's right, brother. I don't only get the belt, the heavy heavyweight championship belt in the ring, brother. I get it in the kitchen, brother. <laughs> Shit. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Hulk Hogan was making spaghetti in this bitch? Thanks, Bam Bam Bigelow. Of course you would know with a name like Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, Terry Balea. Terry Balea, come here and have a pasta. Yeah, man, Hulk Hogan. So we are always doing the, <laughs> the pasta mania jokes. Oh, man, that shit was funny. Luke Letterly. Alfredo, brother, it doesn't matter. You want that fettuccine, brother? The spaghetti, the fusilli, brother? We got it for you. The rigatoni. <laughs> 80s, come and get me, please. Damn it, come and get me. J954, was Pasta Mania a restaurant? I don't know, man. I think it was. And he's from Florida. He's from your neck of the woods down there. Florida. Room 13 says a spaghetti for the Spanish speaker, my friend. Careless says Hulk Hogan's daughter's hot. Brooke, I remember when I worked at the radio station in uh, Salinas, 102.5 Queda, and uh, he came through with uh, with his daughter. It was during her reality show, Brooke Knows Be or Hogan Knows Best, or whatever. And she had a song on the radio for a minute. And so they were coming, making their rounds, and they came to the radio station, got to meet Hulk Hogan. I've told that story before. What a great day. He came and he goes, where's the bathroom, brother? Not so animated, but hey, where's the bathroom, brother? <laughs> I was like, man, you really talk like that. What a trip it was for me to be walking down the hallway with Hulk Hogan, the man that I watched as a kid wrestling, huge fan. You know how the how WWF was in the damn 80s? I don't have to tell you. You lived it. And to be walking down the hall with them, talking with them, that shit was crazy. Where's the bathroom? I got a piss, brother. I got a I got a turtle head poking out, brother. I got to take a big shit and use these 24-inch pythons. <laughs> Raquita Johnson, what up, girl? She says you have the best Im imitations. Mickey is my favorite. I did a short today with Mickey, Raquita. Check that out. Either on my Instagram. Uh, no, it's only on Instagram. I haven't done it on YouTube yet. Because I do all the shorts on Instagram, and then I do them on YouTube. So later today, I'll have one on YouTube. But it's on Instagram right now, at JG Talk. And I did a short for Mickey because for the first time in history, Disney has fallen from the top spot of vacation searches. Uh-oh. Are they starting to feel the crunch? Because that's the only thing these giant, these globs, these blobs of a corporation who spilled over into politics and everything else. Only thing they understand is when you grab them by their financial nuts. Wait, 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 wait. no, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. I'm listening. Oh, please. Oh, let go of my my mouse balls. <laughs> so, 
we'll see how how it goes with that. But I did a short about that, and Mickey made an appearance. Yeah, J954, he did. He slammed Andre at uh, WrestleMania 3. At the, the Pontiac Silverdome, brother. I grabbed that giant, and I slammed him down, brother. Creole Lady says she doesn't have IG. Creole Lady, you wouldn't get IG for me. That's cool. Uh, like I said, I'll put it on YouTube later. Just kick back. I'll get it on there. Yeah. <laughs> Mandy, Mandy Fuesco. She says, damn it, JG. My phone can't hold all these apps to keep up with you. I'm sorry, Mandy. Yeah, alien testosterone, his back paid for it. Fuck yeah, you pick up a 500-pound dude, your back is going to make you pay the price. But what a memorable moment that was. So I got through that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I don't even want to talk about this. You know what? I'll talk about it later. Because I'm sick, I'm sick and tired of them fucking up things that we have gone our entire lives knowing and enjoying. And instead of creating something new, they take something, they're parasitic in nature. They take something that already exists and then they fuck it all up. And they bleh, they vomit their woke all over it and they bukkake it and fucking... 2023. Oh, shit pisses me off. I'm not even going to mention it till later. Authentically Kennedy. She said, I had to delete three apps to download locals to watch Jericho on Mondays. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Miss Kennedy. Fun I love saying your name. Thank you. Fun fact. Corn Pop had a buddy with bad uh, eczema. They called him Frosted. <laughs> You don't want that dude reaching over your plate. Hey, man, who put Parmesan cheese? That's not Parmesan cheese. Thank you for that. Fond dookie. So, uh, yeah, Adam Fox. Evil cannot create. It can only destroy. Well, then they must be 100% evil because that's all they do. We talked about this last night. I don't think, I don't think we talked about it on the show. It might have been. Oh, it was before the show. Hollywood, you son of a bitch. Gabe, what up, Gabe? He says, Pasta Mania. See, Gabe, he knows. He's come down. He's eaten at Pasta Mania, brother. And if you can tackle the big five-pound pot of rigatoni, brother, I will come out of the kitchen and kiss you on your mouth, brother. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. Thanks for being here. Sister Shirley, no IG for me. That's all right, Sister Shirley. I'm glad you're here on YouTube. And like I said, when I'm down here, I'll upload the, the same uh, shorts on YouTube. But they won't be exactly the same. Because, you know, I do them. I do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Uh, so it's not going to be exactly the same, but pretty much. It'll be just as funny. Derek Molino, Hulk up. With garlic bread. Oh, yeah, brother. We got the best garlic bread in the lower 48 states, brother. I take that bread and I mix that garlic, brother, and that parsley with that butter, brother. I get up early. I come in and spread it on that bread, brother. Then I wrap it tight in foil and wait till nighttime where we open up for dinner, brother. That's right, Swamp Fox 1732. They didn't call me Thunderlips for nothing, brother. You eat that pasta. We're tonguing it down, brother. <laughs> anyway, what we are going to talk about before I get to the bullshit. Yo, the, the, today, you are going to get the ultimate drop of anger blood. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat>
So Biden remembers his first time seeing a gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna do some math. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of this here. We're gonna do a little bit of math and figure out if Biden is telling the truth. Do you think he is? Do you think Biden picked now to tell us the truth? Of course not. Don't be don't be ridiculous. So um he had that interview on the daily show the other day and it's the guy uh remember harold and kumar go to white castle or whatever so it's kumar um and he's interviewing people now i always think it's weird when people people i don't want to call them important but when powerful people in the world go on like comedy shows, like Kamala, she was on Stephen Colbert's show. Why? It's not like you got all your chores done. Why are you out here fucking around? But he's getting interviewed by a comedian and he asks him about, or they're talking about the, the anti Ku Klux trans bullshit in Florida. And Biden reminisces about the first time he saw a gay dude. Do any of you, Remember the first time you saw a gay dude. Derek Molino, Colbert is comedy. It, it's classified under comedy. We'll, we'll leave it there. But do you, any of you remember the first time you saw a gay person? I don't. And you know why I don't? It's because I don't give a shit. But Biden, old as he is, old as fuck, he's 80 years old. And he remembers the first time he saw a gay. You fucking asshole. <laughs> and the person he's getting interviewed by, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know uh, Kamal. That's his character's name. I don't know his real name. But he's gay in real life. And he's talking to Biden about gay stuff. And Biden remembers the first time he saw a gay person. Wow. <laughs> Alien testosterone when he joined the Navy. <laughs> Get the fuck. You know what? Look, I'm going to put this bullshit, this gay sailor shit to rest. Army, Marine Corps. Okay, look. The Navy, you're on a boat. You're on a ship. You have your own bed. You have your own space, right? Marine Corps and Army, where do you guys sleep? In a sleeping bag. In a tent together. Where is the greater chance of some weird shit happening? Yes, with you in a sleeping bag, big spoon, little spoon, out in the wilderness together. Let's go out in the field. Yeah. Anywho, um, he's being interviewed by this dude, and he remembers the first time he saw a gay. And uh, I wanted to ask you a slightly yeah. different question. So, um, my partner Josh and I have been engaged well, for gay? the last five years, which really good. only. Stop that shit. Stop that we've been engaged. Because when you're engaged, that means you're going to get married. You can't get married because you're two dudes. That's not marriage. You call it something else. You are not getting married. It's a civil union. It's a partnership. I don't know what the fuck, but that is not marriage. Stop saying that. You can't compare what you're going to do to what I did. I got married to my wife. You know why? Because one day we wanted to have children. That's the whole point of marriage is to someday start a family and raise other humans to add to the population. You can't do that. You guys can bump and grind, and you can sword fight, and you can fucking dock, and you can get your Twinkie stinky, but you ain't making no damn babies. Now, can you go out and adopt one and be a selfish prick and invite a child into your weirdness? Yeah, you can. I wish you couldn't, but you could do that. But you ain't, you're not getting married. You ain't, no, you're not getting fucking married. 
you're uniting, you're doing some other shit. But that's not marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Don't you dare pervert this shit. But they're allowed to. He's allowed to sit in front of the resident of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and say that bullshit. But don't worry. Sloppy Joe brought some bullshit of his own. My partner Josh and I have been engaged oh, for gay? the last five years. Which really only means man. that every auntie... Oh, and this is the uh, from the Hodge Twins video. By the way, shout out to the Hodge Twins. Let's do something. Yes, uncle that I have answer. is beyond disappointed that there hasn't been a wedding yet. Oh, but, great. Uh, but Cardi B is going to marry us, apparently, officiate our wedding, which would... Which would... What? You're going to further spit in the face of marriage by being married by Retardy B. Who is she even married? Is Retardy B even married? Be nice. But my, my question for you, Mr. President, is you codified uh, support for same sex marriage and interracial marriages like like ours. I'm curious what your evil the fuck interracial marriages? Motherfucker, it's 2023. You weren't able to do that before he codified it? Lucian was like on marriage equality and what the federal government might be able to do to protect LGBTQ Americans, especially trans kids who are dealing with all these regressive state laws that are popping up right now. Are you shitting me? The federal government hasn't done enough for you? The federal government hasn't done enough. That's 50% of the, what these fucking idiots talk about. Look at his cabinet. It's full of you weird motherfuckers. He hasn't done enough? You want more? <laughs> what? Did you not see the White House lit up like a bag of Skittles for your fucking ass? <laughs> wow. What can the federal government do? right now oh hold on stupid ad can you believe that shit what can the federal government do i can remember exactly what my uh, epiphany was okay I hadn't thought much about it tell you uh, the truth and i was a i was a senior in high school and senior in high school okay senior in high school that's what 17 18 we'll say uh 17 okay going to do some quick math. Bear with me. Joe Biden. Sloppy Joe. Now, he did say he's been in the Senate for 720 years, but we'll assume he was wrong. And we'll go with this date. 1942. Bidenus Pervertis was born. And you're, he says he was a senior in high school. So 17 years. That is 1959. Keep in mind. What he's about to describe happened in 1959. Okay. 1959. Here we go. And my dad was dropping me off. I remember about to get out of the car and I looked to my right and two well-dressed men in suits kissed each other. I mean, they gave each other a kiss. And then one went, looked like he was heading to the Trump building. One looked like he had to the... Hercules Corporation building. Like and I'll never forget, I turned and looked at my dad. He said, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. It's simple. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. That means I just lied. <laughs> so you're telling me. And he grew up in uh, the Midwest, right? Scranton. <laughs> Scranton, Pennsylvania. The steel belt of America. A lot of hard hats and steel toe boots. 1959. You and your pop, your pa, was dropping you off at school. And you looked over and saw two well-dressed men. So they just, they rode to work together and they got out on the sidewalk in front of everybody in 1959 and kissed each other and walked their separate ways. And due to the strangeness of what you just saw, because that's why you turned around and looked at your paw, and he said, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. 
get the fuck out of here. If that happened in 1959 in the Midwest, it wouldn't have gone unchecked. It wouldn't have gone unnoticed. And, and let's not forget, there's no way in hell, even if those two dudes were gay, they weren't going to kiss each other on the sidewalk in public. That shit was taboo. It wasn't this freaky shit we're doing now. You weren't kissing the same sex on the sidewalk in 1959. I don't give a fuck where you lived. But somehow, some way, Biden is pervertus. Found the most progressive father in the world living in the most progressive town in 1959 where it was, hmm, they love each other. It's that simple, Joey. Oh, I'm not joking. Yeah, you are. I'm not joking. You are. It's simple. I love it. And it's never been. It's, 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 it's just that simple. <laughs> it's just that simple. Since 1959, it's just that simple. Now, I hate to do this, guys, because you know we we all all of us here love and respect this man. So I don't want to do this, but. You remember he said that he was raised where? He went to at least three different churches. He went to the Catholic church because he says, I might be Irish, but I'm not stupid. I'm Catholic and I married Don Bonatello's daughter or some shit. She ain't even Italian. So he went to the Catholic church. He said he was raised in the black church. Remember that? He was raised, mm -hmm. he was raised in the black church. There was nowhere on earth more anti-gay than the black church in the 50s, okay? He also went, he was also raised by Puerto Ricans. So he went to church with them too. He went to three churches a day. And you, everybody was okay with two gay dudes kissing each other on the sidewalk. Simeon Merriweather, thank you for the $5 super speaker. Leonard S., thank you. When Brandon is lying, he speaks smoothly. No gaffes. <laughs> he never does that. It's just that simple. Shut the fuck up. And remember when he said uh, back in the day that marriage is between a man and a woman. What happened? You don't have epiphanies in your 70s. You are who you are. LDS German Shepherd Boy, thank you. Sloppy Joe, at it again. Does he ever stop? Does he ever stop? No, no joke. I'm not kidding. No, no, no. It's, it's not hyperbole. It's fact. Shut the fuck up. You old decrepit piece of shit. You hate gay people. <laughs> Oh, Granny Goose, he said, you're forgetting the Jews' church. He went to a uh, synagogue, too? Damn, Joe, where'd you, <laughs> where'd you find all this time in the day? You just got around. God. Get the fuck out of here. 1959. In public. Get, man, there ain't no way in the world that would have happened. They wouldn't have done it. Marcus C., that's right. Plathetic. <laughs> They wouldn't have done it. There would be nothing to accept and be progressive about. They wouldn't have done that shit. If you went out on the sidewalk in public and kissed somebody of the same sex in 1959, you were ready for some trouble. They might have arrested your ass. You might have gotten arrested for that. If nothing else, but for your safety. That's right, Rome 13, a plethora. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Oh, old school Mac boy says you couldn't have done it in the 80s. That shit was taboo. Black folks do not, or I guess now they do, judging by BET and all this woke shit. But back in the day, black folks did not like gay people. That was taboo. You kept that shit to yourself. You lived Anne Frank style with that kind of information. You kept that shit to yourself. Up into the 80s and 90s. But somehow you found this woke pocket in the, in the heartland of America in 1959. Shut the 
shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, Joey, it's that simple. They love each other. <laughs> and no one's going to call bullshit on that. You notice that dude didn't bust out laughing when he said that. Laughing. But I can't stand that bullshit. You fucking, you come up with something else. That's not marriage. That is not marriage. Look at Harvey Milk in the 70s in San Francisco where they make gay people. He got killed. But in Scranton, Pennsylvania, 20 years before that, it was all good. Fuck out of here. Alien testosterone, thank you, he says, because JG got kids to feed. I sure do. Two of them. My son already damn near eats like a man. When he, when he turns 13, I'm sending him somewhere. I can't. I can't feed you, man. You're too much. But, you know, that metabolism. He's slim and trim, too. He's going to be tall and lanky when he grows up. So he just has that, you know. I don't even know if... Uh, I don't even know if, if the food makes it to his stomach. I think his body absorbs it before he even reaches his stomach. Because his, my son's two favorite words, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Mom, I'm hungry. Dad, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. What's for dinner? I'm hungry. Wait, what do you mean you're hungry? Do you need a feeding tube? I just fed you. Okay, guys, let's get this fucking, uh, let's get this drop of anger blood out of the way. Okay. I'm so sick. I'm so sick of these bastards ruining our shit. Things that we grew up watching, being entertained by, and they just <gasps> kadoom. You know, it's so such a big turd that it goes kadoom in the toilet. That's what they do all over the things we love. Kadoom. Here's something real quick. This isn't what. Uh, this isn't what I was going to talk about, but this will maybe upset you a little bit, too. Uh, my brother sent this to me. I saw a little bit earlier, but he sent me uh, the article about it. Stupid. It's so stupid. Why? Here we go. Netflix cancels preschool show Ridley Jones. After backlash over non-binary bison character. Yes, as in a buffalo. The little buffalo comes out. The new season was released on March 6th and featured a female bison, Winifred, who wanted to be called Fred and used the they-them pronouns. The episode portrays the young character's co concerns about coming out as non-binary to her grandmother. Voiced by Cindy Lauper. So now I got to throw you in that pile, Cindy Lopper. Now you're another woke bitch. And the bison, to quote the bison, um, my heart says that the way I feel most myself is to go by the name Fred. That's because I'm non-binary. And Fred is the name that fits me best. And I also use they and them because calling me she or he doesn't feel right to me, Winifred says in the episode. You want to hear Winifred? That's because I'm non binary, and Fred is the name that fits me best. And I also use they and them because calling me a she or a he doesn't feel right to me. I'm sorry I used the wrong name and pronouns. How about the way it makes us feel calling you they them? That's grammatically incorrect. I'm supposed to go against decades of teachings of how to speak. To satisfy you, they, them is a plural for more than one person, not just you, you fuck. And if you're non-binary, why are you going by a name like Fred? Fred, that's a man's name. Why, how, they can't even get their own shit right. Non-binary means neither man or woman, but your name is Fred. The f how, does, how do you reconcile the two? What's up, Ingrid De La Rosa? What? That doesn't mean you're non-binary, but your name is Fred. 
Anybody know any ladies named Fred? Hollis Tall. It don't matter that you're late. You're here now. Come on in. Have a seat. Kayla, how old are you, Jericho? I'm 37 and I don't remember Winifred. What the hell? I'm 42. I damn sure don't remember that shit. But I guess it's some new show. Desiree, what kid talks like that? Exactly. No kid is that in touch with their feelings and that articulate about such complex goings on. And I'm going to go out on a limb and I don't care if I'm by myself. There are no trans kids. There are only children with fucked up parents. That's it. There are no trans kids. There are parents who are horrible and disgusting that want to use these kids to get pats on the back. That's all. There ain't no damn trans kids. And never mind a kid not being able to vote or buy a lottery ticket or sign a contract or anything like that because they're under the age of 18. Never mind that. But you want to give them the ability to make permanent alterations to their body and mind. And they can't do that stuff. Fuck all that. A kid can't go on a field trip without parental consent. Kids can't do nothing without their parent without their parents' consent or permission. You can't go somewhere with your class off of school property unless I say so. But you're going to take my 12-year-old into a back room at school and take them to get their tits chopped off without my consent? Do you know what's going to happen to you if you do that? Do you know what's going to happen if you return a child to their parent different than the way they gave them to you in the morning? In some states, and I believe California is one of them, a child as young as 12 can get an abortion without parental consent. Doctor, are you trying to make me fuck you up? You're going to remove something from my child's body without my... Man, please. Please. You can't get a pack of smokes. But you can get gender altering surgery or medication. Oh, oh, Tay, Leonard S, Frederica. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, and no agenda there. There's no agenda at all. This is just child entertainment. That's it. There's nothing to see here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Break it up. Nothing to see here. Just teaching kids about non-binary, whatever the fuck that is. Simeon Merriweather, thank you for the thing for the super a speaker. Move along. No agenda. This isn't some new shit you never heard of before. Get out of here. LDS German Shepherd Boy. Amen, JG. Hey, fuck that. <laughs> you're not that shit's not gonna slide you're you're out of your mind non <laughs> am i the only one who that that term is new to before trump came down that escalator i never heard of no non-binary uh, i'm dumb i'm not well read whatever the fuck you want to call it i never heard of that shit before never now it's everywhere I'm non-binary. You ain't a fucking non-binary. How can you be non-binary and you always look like a dude? Why don't you just wear a, like a beige cloak so I can't tell what you are? Because everybody who's non-binary, I can tell what you are. You look like a dude. So, now, for the, if that didn't give you the anger blood, this will because they taken they're taking a dookie on a classic. Oh, before I get to that, I want to um hear it. I'll, I'll read to you what my brother said when he sent it to me, and then I want to read something else that he said. I wanted to read it yesterday, but I didn't I didn't have time to get to it. Um, he said he wrote a quote non-binary bison comes out to its grandmother. No, no, no. Hold on. Okay, yeah. A non-binary bison comes out to its grandmother as an episode on a kid's show. Yeah, there's no agenda at all. And this stuff is based on, quote, science. So 
Now we have three types of bovine, cows, bulls, and gender nonconforming. This dog shit will continue to get canceled. People have had enough, and it's, and it's not even about prejudice either. No, it's not. It's about protecting our kids. That goes across socioeconomic racial lines. We, we can all unite on that. As a society, kids, any of you don't have kids, you should be about protecting them. Uh, let's see. So the other day, I was talking to my brother. And he sent me he sent me this video and so there's this panel and there are regular folk and there looks like there's a couple of Ku Klux trans members on there. And one of the Ku Klux trans members is like wearing a suit jacket, but he has like pink lipstick on and, and eyeliner and rouge and shit. And he's talking about how the education system and, and teaching, uh, critical race theory and all this bullshit right so my brother <clears throat> he wrote he wrote this after he sent that to me and the the dude was it was a black dude who was uh talking about eh, teaching uh critical race theory and non-binary and all this shit he was a black dude so <clears throat> Uh, uh, authentically Kennedy Jericho, didn't you say your brother isn't conservative? No, my brother, I definitely wouldn't label him as a conservative, but he has conservative tendencies. He served in two branches of the military, active duty and uh, reserve. So he's no, he's not a complete leftist nut. He's not even close. And you, you, you'll be able to tell by what I'm about to read, but, uh, no, he's definitely not conservative. Um, but, uh, he's basically talking about how, Black folks are portrayed on TV and how detrimental it is. And I've said things like this before, but he puts it pretty good. So this is from my brother. I'll never understand why people enjoy entertaining themselves with black dysfunction, especially black people. When you watch trash like Ayanla, Fix My Life, Love and Hip Hop, Empire, Jerry Springer, Maury Povich, First 48. I took a I took uh umbrage with that. I even texted him, but I love first first 48. No, fuck that. Uh, Lauren Lakes, uh paternity court and whatever black, whatever black centered real housewife show on TV, you empower these destructive forms of distraction. What do you get? out of watching black people argue, fight, scream, and reinforce every ignorant stereotype imaginable. These TV programs continue to let the world outside of black America believe that we are all a bunch of loud, obnoxious clowns that are incapable of functioning in peaceful and productive forms of conflict resolution. They'll continue to be led into thinking that all our families are made up of children that have the same mother, but have a slew of different absentee fathers, that our women are more concerned with hair weaves and dragon lady fingernails than proper diction and enunciation. And furthermore, incapable of being of incapable of keeping a man because they are perpetually angry at the world. In addition, our men in these shows are a bunch of inarticulate slicksters that care more about a new pair of Jordans than their collection of illegitimate children that they are are shiftless, lazy, prone to violence, and only good for making babies like farm studs. Ask yourself, why are the majority of Black people on television cast members of reality TV shows or simpletons found on court television or talk shows? If people in countries where few, few to no Black people live could only learn about us from television, what would their impressions be? Please stop watching this garbage. It speaks volumes about your personal taste if you enjoy wasting hours on this foolishness. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Um, and, and as somebody who, as a black person who's not, well, there's two different types. There's black folks and there's niggas. And that is the most true statement you'll ever hear. OK, as a black person, I totally agree with that. And that's a constant fight and struggle is combating those types of images, because if you did it and it shit, even if you live in, in our country and you don't have a lot of interactions with black folks, you're going to believe that shit. 
Hell, even if you do, you're going to believe that that's the majority because those are the images that you're bombarded with. And I don't only blame it on the people who watch it and give those people, give Hollywood a reason to make that shit. I also blame the black folks who sign up for that shit. You are on camera acting like a fucking idiot. Like that lady with 15 kids pregnant with her 16th. Somebody's got to come help me with these kids. All the ghetto ass dumb hood rap bitches you see on TV. Pants sagging, shooting each other in the face over J's and disrespect. I hate those fucking images. Because I'm not one of those niggas. And that's not me and never has been. Do you know what would happen to me and my brother? If we came up in our parents' house with our pants sagging, do you know what would happen to my brother and I if we came up in my parents' house talking about, bro, prit, prat, nigga, this, all this shit, you know what I'm saying? My parents would slap the shit out of us until we stopped acting like that. My mom didn't want us to say ain't or can't. My mom was a grammar Nazi. She would proofread and correct our letters and, and cards and notes to family members. We weren't allowed to do that bullshit. There was no niggardom allowed in our house. But niggas seem to get the tallest soapbox and the loudest bullhorn and the most publicity. To where people that would believe that all black folks are like that. And I'm offended by that. Don't you lump me together with those sorry ass motherfuckers. My dad would tell me, son, they may be your color, but they ain't your kind. You damn right. I can't stand people like that. Them reality shows, there's some shit called uh, Baddies West. And I can only imagine what that room smells like when you get all these dirty, funky bitches in there. All they do is yell, scream, smoke weed, and fight. And people are watching that shit. They're either ghetto or they're out at, on, on the vanguard of this Ku Klux Klan shit, breaking their neck to be the first one on TV looking like a freak. Can't stand that shit. Mr. Alake, thank you. Hey, Americans. Love your videos, Jericho. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And stuff like that I wish could be read at a podium that the whole country could hear. They are not us. I'm not like them. I hate them more than you hate them because you think I'm them. Shit. LDS German Shepherd Boy, thank you again. Sounds like Mama JG was a tiger mom, and I mean that in a good way. Yeah, my mom didn't fuck around. My mom was kind, and she was very motherly and nurturing and gentle and affectionate, all those things. But my mom had another side. My mom didn't play that. Man, oh my goodness. I don't know if I would survive if I came home, if I came in my parents' house with my pants sagging? Okay. Fuck around and find out. My mom, and Mandy Westcott, I hate rap music. My mom hates, hates, loathes rap music. My mom fucking hates rap music. And we got caught, and we got caught sometimes we were kids, you know, coming up in the 80s, 90s, rap was big. It was starting to be big. And we listened to it. I, I've told you guys a story before. I was probably 15 or 16, probably going on 16. And I went to visit my aunt. Shout out to my aunt, Julia. I went to visit her down, and she lived in LA at the time. And my me and my cousin, we went to uh like a Tower Records or something. And bought, I bought all the latest shit. Outkast, Dr. Dre, Warren G. I had all this shit. I had five, six CDs. And I was listening to them on the stereo in the living room. And my mom was at work, but she came home early. How much? Uh, how many of us got busted by our parents coming home early? <laughs> and she heard that shit. And uh, she grabbed, she collected all of my CDs and opened the fireplace and threw them in there. And I watched them all melt into a big old ball of melted rap music. And she looked at me and said, I want to hear that shit in my house again. That was it. That was it for my rap CDs in the house. Now, did I stop listening to rap? No. 
Um, but ah, damn sure wasn't playing that shit on the house stereo no more. And that's a diff. That's the difference. Um, my my parents. You're not going to keep your kids from doing shit, listening to bad music or doing whatever kids do. You're not going to stop them from doing it. But what you can do is make it clear that we don't accept this shit here. We don't support it. If I catch you doing it, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to take shit away from you or whatever. However you punish your kids, they need to know. I, I might do this, but I do it under, under the chance that if I get caught, I got to pay the price. It's not condoned. My mom wasn't going to come into my room and I'm listening to rap music and like, what, mom, what do you need? No, no, no. I knew that shit was wrong. That's the difference. You're not going to stop them. You might. You might stop them from doing some shit, but your kids are going to do shit they're not supposed to do. But they need to know if I get caught. That's it. Got to pay the piper. So it was very clear. My mom fucking hates rap music. I don't want you listening to that shit. It objectifies women. It calls them bitches. And there's no explaining that. Mom, they're talking about. She didn't want to hear that shit. Don't play that shit in my house. Period. Creole lady, thank you for the twomp ski. She says, here's to parenting. You're damn right. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the faint of heart. And whether you're doing it right or wrong, it's not easy. Because if you, if you give your kids everything they want, there's no boundaries and there's no discipline. It's going to get hard. They're going to disrespect you. It's going to get tough. They're going to get in trouble. You're going to be stressed the fuck out. And if you're doing it right, you're on your kids. You're up their ass about stuff. Who are you doing? Where are you going? Rules and regulations and all that. It's hard. So it's hard either way. So you might as well have it be hard and get some good out of it. Simeon Merriweather. Thank you again for another. Hey, super sneaker. But I just wanted to read that to you guys. I found it very profound. J954, thank you. It says, when I was 12, my mom caught me listening to two live crew. That's about as bad as it gets in <laughs> rap music. She uh, she tooled the tape and then, and then beat my ass. LOL, funny looking back at that moment. Yeah, it's funny now. <laughs> it's funny now. But at the moment when your ass is still smoking, it is not funny. And there is some good rap out there. Like one of my favorite rapper, hands down, is a dude named Farrell Monch. He's from Queens, New York. Lyrical fucking genius. And there's some profanity, but it's not like gangster rap and all that type of shit. Um, I think some people might consider it conscious rap, but Farrell Monch is, is the shit. There's good rap out there, and there's bad rap. And when you're an adult, when you're an adult, it don't matter. There ain't no rapper gonna talk you into doing no stupid shit. But when you're a kid, yeah. They definitely glamorize certain lifestyles and make you think it's okay to try or smoke weed and shit like that. That's the truth. But as an adult, it don't matter what you fucking listen to. Uh, I like rapper like Lil Wayne. I like Lil Wayne. I think he's a great uh, MC. That dude's awesome. You listen to the lyrics and what he's saying. I love it. Uh, I think he's a great rapper. But there's some rappers out there that are cool. Jay Post is Coogee Rap. Yeah, Coogee Rap's old school, but he was tight. I got some on my playlist. I got some uh, Eric B and Rakim. Sw don't sweat the technique. Uh ah, oh, what can I? Ah, uh, damn it! I can't think of it. I can see. I can picture the videos in black and white. What Eric B. and Rakim song is that? When he says, "Uh, ah," uh, he said, "I try to rock the microphone. They tell me I'm too small. I say cool, but I don't get upset. I kick a hole in the speaker, pull the plug, then I jet." Uh I can. I can't think of it right now. But there's some good shit out there. You might have to go back a little far. Uh, Chozo Ghost, thank you. So what's this classic that's being ruined? Would at least like to know what it is. <laughs> I have to go soon, and I want to look it up later. LOL, you teasing. I'll, I'll tell you right now. Microphone Fiend, thank you. I'm a microphone fiend. You're right, Waquita. Thank you, guys. I don't get upset. I kick a hole in the speaker, pull the plug, then I jet. Uh, to DMW 24-7 TV, Farrell Monch is a lyrical beast. He is, man. Simon Says, come on. Get the fuck up. Dun, 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 dun. That was my introduction to him. I was like, I was stationed in New Jersey, and I heard that song on the radio on Hot 97. I was like, whoa, what the fuck is this dude? Uh, fire. Yeah, Salty Fisher Girls, rub on your titties. Yeah, fuck it. I said rub on your titties. 
New York City, pretty committee, pity the fool that act shitty in the midst of the calm, the witty. Y'all know the name. Feral fucking munch. Ain't a damn thing change. You all up in your range of shit, inebriated. Straight from your original plan, you deviated. Uh, okay, here we go, guys. What's the name of this shit? There's a Fairmont song called Behind Closed Doors. I hear. Here we go, guys. You ready? You ready? Look up. If you look up now, you will see the wide open distended anus of Hollywood about to take a ropey shit on top of a classic. What is that classic? <sighs> Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. June 30th, 2023. A brand new Indiana Jones movie. Wait a minute, guys. I know what you're thinking. Harrison Ford, he's old as fuck. He can't play Indiana Jones and be running around with his hat, leather jacket, and whip. Don't worry, guys. We now have something in this day and age that permeates everything. It's called CGI. Now, I don't mean to be an old curmudgeon, but can we get a little more? Can we get a few more practical special effects? Everything is CGI. When you watch the trailer, everything, the crowd, the shit they're doing, it's all CGI. The shit sucks. But here's the premise. In 1969, American archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones lives against the backdrop of the space race. Jones is uneasy over the fact that the U.S. government has recruited former Nazis to help beat the Soviet Union in the competition to make it to space. His goddaughter, Helena Shaw, accompanies him on his journey. Meanwhile, Jurgen Voyer, a NASA member and ex-Nazi involved with the moon landing program, wishes to make the world into a better place as he sees fit. So that doesn't sound too bad, right? He's, he's teaming up with his goddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> this is hollywood we're talking about guys you know they're going to take it further so apparently in this version of indiana jones dial of destiny uh sean explained it last night so i'll do my best to remember but basically something happens to where indiana jones he I don't know if he dies or he gets stuck somewhere or something, but his goddaughter ends up carrying out all of his missions. So all the Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Last Crusade, she's doing it. His goddaughter, Helena Shaw, is Indiana Jones. So she's going to be doing that shit. So you, instead of making, make a whole new chapter of Indiana Jones, go for it. No, you're going to take Indy and put him on the sidelines and have his daughter, his goddaughter, carry out his missions. You fucking assholes. I'm so sick of this shit. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Why can't you guys just make your own shit are you out of create are you are you tapped out of creativity why do you guys keep doing this i don't want to see S superman's son tugging down another boy i don't want to see the joker pregnant i don't want to see a black well, i was going to say black cat woman <laughs> but that's happened before but the new Black or a uh, uh, a bat girl. That's what it is. I don't want to see a black bat girl. I don't because bat girl was related to Alfred. That's his granddaughter or some shit like that. Alfred's a British white dude. How does he have a black uh, granddaughter? I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see your race swapping. I don't want your tokenism. I don't want to see a black Tinker Bell and a black Little Mermaid. And it never goes the other way. You gonna make a white blade? No, you ain't going to do that shit because that's racist, right? 
I'm so tired of this bullshit. Come up with your own shit. Blow our minds. Be creative. Give us something new. But don't reach back. Here, hold on. Hand me a classic. Oh, this, this you grew up loving? This you've been watching since 1982? This that you have fond memories of in your childhood and you enjoyed and you want to pass on to your kids? This? Oh, here, come here. Oh, shit. Hold on to me. Ah, there we go. We wiped our Hollywood ass with it. Here, enjoy. I don't want that. Don't touch it. What, what was already created is great. Try something new. Mm, 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 mm. They feel about creativity the way the left feels about personal responsi responsibility for people of color. Brad of me, one, two, three, four. They bring it back, Sean Connery? No, nah, he's gone. RIP. Wouldn't that be great to have Sean Connery back? A lot of danger. Losers complain about their best. Indy Junior. <laughs> Golly, you fuck! Why do they keep doing that? Make up your own shit. You're gonna fuck up Indiana Jones now, and have his. Goddaughter out there doing that shit? Exactly, authentically, Kennedy. She says, I'm tired of these black knockoffs. That's insulting. Don't you understand that? That's insulting. Don't airbrush some shit that already exists into another color. Come up with something new. Patrick Hattrick, what's next? Trans Tarzan? Don't even say that out loud, Patrick Hattrick. Why would you even put that in the universe, man? They'll totally do that. You'll totally see some, some yoked up Vera DeMilo looking chick swinging through the jungle. And again, the, the CGI, it's too much. It's cool. But it's too much. Everything is CGI in this movie. The whole trail, 90% of the trailer was CGI. Give me some real shit, some practical special effects. It looks cool, Hollywood. It actually looks cool. Ingrid De La Rosa says, trans supermancito. Why would you even put that in the universe? Now they're going to do it, Ingrid. They're going to do it. They're going to take everything you love and just... A ropey, foamy, wet dookie all over it. Solomon Gray, big trouble in Little China. Get Kevin Hart to do it. Don't don't doubt it. They, can you believe this shit? There's a new movie. I think it's on Netflix or something or Prime. I think it's on Prime. It's a new Kevin Hart movie. Which fuck, Kevin Hart, stop making movies. You suck. But it's a new movie and it's called Die Hart. Like his last name, H A R T. Who the fuck do you think you are? You made an action movie called Die Heart? Who are you? Bruce Willis is still alive, so you can't do that. But the nerve. I get it. But you do not deserve to have anything to do with Die Hard. You suck. Kevin Hart movies fucking suck. Faithless. Kevin Hart, so little trouble in big China. <laughs> Probably. <sighs> Die Hart. Who the fuck do you think you are? Kevin Hart sucks. Yeah, Brian King B. Falcon, you seen that bullshit? <laughs> what? All of Kevin Hart's movies suck. He plays the same character in every movie, a whiny little scared bitch. And if he has a woman, she has bigger balls than him, and he's afraid of her. Why is it always portrayed that way? Why is a black man in the movie, going back to what my brother was saying, why is a black man in the movie always portrayed as being afraid of his woman? If, I, if I'm afraid of you, you're not going to be my woman. You're not going to be my woman. 
I don't want this constant struggle on you talking to me like I'm a fucking eight-year-old. I know Kevin Hart's the size of an eight-year-old. But you're going to let your woman talk to you? Get the fuck out of here. I can't stand that, that strong black woman shit. You're not being a strong woman. You're being an asshole. Every time they talk about it, I'm a strong black woman. No, you're a fucking bitch. No man's afraid of, no man it can't, he can't handle me. No man wants to deal with you. What do you mean can't handle you? What, are you going to beat his ass? A dude will fuck you up. Not that he can't handle you, he don't want to. But the black women are always portrayed as these strong, overbearing bitches. And the black man is always, oh shit, man. Oh, 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 oh answer my phone. Oh, oh, hold on, guys. It's 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 LaQuisha. Oh shit. No, baby, I'm not there. I'm I'm, I'm over here. Uh, the fuck? The fuck are you talking about? You ain't gonna be talking to me like that. Who? Me? You ain't fucking talking to me like that. What man would put up with that shit? You're not strong. You're a bitch. You're being a, uh, and here comes the C word, guys. So if you don't like it, I'm not going to say it. Look, the British people, do. you know you're being a real cunt. No, you're being a cunt. You're being an asshole. That's not strong. You're a bitch. No man's going to put up with that shit. Oh, but I'm sorry. Oh, man, I haven't been afraid of a woman since I moved out of my mother's house. I'll be damn as grown as I am, all the taxes I pay, and as hard as I work, I'm going to come into the house and you're going to talk to me like a third child. You must be out of your fucking mind. And I don't use that C word often. I probably never even said it on my platform before. So that's how serious I am about it. I can't stand that bullshit. I'm be scared of your woman. Your woman shouldn't be scared of you, and you shouldn't be scared of her. That's not a relationship. That is not a relationship. That's a hostage situation. Man, I'll, I would break up with that. <laughs> You got one time to do that shit. And I and I, maybe, I don't know, maybe you had a, the, a tough day. Maybe you fell and bumped your head on the way home. I don't know. But I'll give you that one. But that shit ain't gonna happen again. And if it does, peace the fuck out. I can't stand that shit. No weak ass man. I knew this dude. He had a girlfriend and she was a fucking bitch. And we would go over to their house, you know, after work or whatever sometimes. And she would be like, she sent one time she sent him to the store. And he comes back with the wrong thing. And in front of all of us, there was probably four or five other people that we, we were coming over for dinner. And she goes, are you fucking stupid? I told you to get this one, not that one. Now go back to the fucking store, you idiot. And we're all like, <laughs> huh? We were silent. What the fuck? Yo, this motherfucker comes back. He got the wrong thing again. She said, are you fucking retarded? Look, this is the one I need you to get. Take it with you back to the store. You're so fucking dumb. In front of everybody. And I talked to him. Like I said, he was a homeboy of mine. I said, uh, you know, later on, I took him aside, dude, what, what the fuck? Why do you let her talk to you like that, man? Oh, it's, it's nothing, man. She's just in a bad mood. Bruh, I don't care if she just got the worst news of her life. She can't be talking to you like that, bro. That, that shit fell on deaf ears. It never changed. Pretty soon we stopped being friends because I just couldn't. I can't respect anybody like that. She said, are you fucking stupid? Go back to the store again. What? Yeah, right. Michael Coulter uh, says Jericho Green uh, and has some uh, badass Latino rappers back in the day, as well as one Latino rapper I used to listen to named Kid Flash. I never heard of Kid Flash. Uh, I heard of, uh, oh, man, Kid Frost. <laughs> I remember Kid Frost. Back to the hotel. Was that Kid Frost? Dun -dun 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 -dun. 
back to the hotel. Yeah, man, I just don't. I don't get that shit. Like, there's no way in hell I would allow that to happen. No way. R. Scott, thanks for the ham. Oh, that's not R. Scott. That's Mental Medalist Wife. What up to you, Mental Medalist Wife? But you are not R. Scott. This is R. Scott. Uh, thank you for the Hamilton. He says, when will they correct the Dukes of Hazard coin toss for the choice flag on the roof? I hope never. That's part of it. That's part of the General Lee. There's two things about, three things about the General Lee. It's going to jump over some crazy shit. The doors don't open. And there's a Confederate flag on the roof. That's it. Raquita Johnson, exactly. You don't talk to your spouse like that. Are you crazy? And they have kids. They should talk like, like that in front of him to the kids. Hell fucking no. No way. Cold Brew 406. Thank you for that, for the Hamilton, sir. Appreciate it. He says, hello, JG. Much thanks, sir. Much thanks to you. Thank you. Oscar Gonzalez says he's whipped. That motherfucker's broken. Broken. Oh, yeah, mental medicine wife in front of the fellas, their girlfriends, everybody. I was like, man, I, I can't fuck with you anymore. I can't. I can't stand here and listen to you be talked to like that. And not like it's uh, of, of need. I got to feel to protect you or, hey, don't talk to my friend like that. It's just I don't want to be around that. That's weird. Cool. Country girl, Lizzo with the Daisy Duke. Oh, shit. Mm-mm. <sighs> Yeah, R. Scott, Kid Frost, La Raza. This is for La Raza. Oh, yeah, they had that, like, that jazz beat. Dun, 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 dun. Had like the saxophone and shit. This is for La Raza. Who sung back to the hotel? Oh, you guys tell me. Shit. Who sang back to the hotel? Remember Lighter Shade of Brown? Oh, so there was a, a concert when I worked at the radio station, and it was called the Freestyle Explosion. So it had, um, uh, what's her name? Lisa Lisa, Debbie Deb, Johnny O, uh, Stevie B. Why do they all got letters? <laughs> but Stevie B, Johnny O, Debbie Deb, uh, Hammer was on there, Lighter Shade of Brown, and somebody else. But Lighter Shade of Brown was on there. You know that song, A Latin Active? Let's jam, let's jam, Latin Active. <laughs> But uh, what was the dude's one of the dudes' name? Um, yeah, in too deep. Thanks a lot, like HK. One of the dudes, he was like a big old pervert, and like none of the interns wanted to be around him because he was a weirdo for lighter shade of brown. But Latin active, that was a shit. Let's jam, let's jam, Latin active. Or uh, sitting in the park on a Sunday afternoon, me and the crew just jamming the oldie tunes, sipping on a cold bottle, a brewski. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh shit back in the day 80s or 90s you can come and get me either one i'm not mad i'm not mad at all either either one of you decades come pick me up please 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 come Oh, young black teenagers, Taryn Isaac, and they were white dudes. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. Young black teenagers were like, I think two or three white kids. They had like dreads and shit, and they talked like they were from the hood. <laughs> oh, you couldn't do that now because it would be called what? If three white kids wanted to get together and form a rap group and call themselves young black teenagers, what would that be called? Two words. The first word starts with a C, and the second word starts with an A. You know. That's what it would be called. Oh, Millie Vanilli. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, they were white kids, but, you know, what would they call it? Somebody tell me. What would they call it if two, if, if some white kids wanted to be called young black teenagers? Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. No, alien robot ghost thugs. No, no. <laughs> no. Oh, man. 
Nope. Salty dog three, three, nine. Good to see you here. Racist. No two words. They love it. There you go. No. <laughs> no. Zach Kaleha. Cultural, uh, not a cultural appro uh, appreciation, cultural appropriation. That's right. Generally specific cultural appropriation. And they got some heat for it back in the day. People would talk shit, but it wasn't like it is now. Like they wouldn't have been canceled. They wouldn't like have their careers taken away because of that. But yeah, young black teenagers, and they were anything but. They were young white teenagers, but they certainly weren't, certainly weren't young black ones. <clears throat> Patrick Allard Wiggers. And that's another one. How do you get away with that? They wouldn't let that shit slide. Call somebody a wigger. Because somebody might get a finger. <laughs> Stupid ass shit. <laughs> now, I see, I got to throw that shit. Uh, I got to throw some of that shit on my uh, J Poe third base. That's right. Uh, MC Search. I can't remember the other guy's name. It was two guys. MC Search. I think two guys and a DJ. Two MCs and a DJ. And yeah, that song Pop Goes the Weasel. -na 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 -na. Pop Pop Goes the Weasel. But now MC Search, he's a fucking woke bitch. He is such a woke piece of shit. I gotta put on Latin active. Yeah. Oh, you guys, I'll be out on the corner at the end of my street on the corner waiting for uh, the 80s or the 90s to come pick me up. If you don't see me here tomorrow, that means they came to get me. That means they finally came to get me and take me back. Diesel, DOS effects. Oh, yeah, I remember them. DOS effects. We want to fix. DOS effects. Onyx. Slam. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Poke, poke Mars. I don't always smile, but when I do, I choose JG. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tommy Karate, Foo Schnickens. They did a song with Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, Shaquille O'Neal had a rap album. I think it went platinum too. He's a decent MC, believe it or not. Salty Dog 339. They couldn't do that song now. Girls by Beastie Boys. To do the dishes, to clean up my room, to do the laundry. Nah, they kidding me? And you know what? It wouldn't even be a woman that would get mad. It'd be one of these new 2023 Ku Klux trans women with a little something extra. Yeah, they would be the ones getting mad. <laughs> Born Jamaicans. I remember those fools. Yep, Angel Hughes, a tribe. I never liked Q-Tip's voice. I just didn't. R.I.P. Fife Dog. Never liked Q-Tip's voice, except in that song, Vibrant Thing, but I think it was more the beat that I liked. That was a tight beat. It goes on and on and on and on and on and Yeah, I mean, you guys are going to have me making a whole new playlist. Yeah, I, mean, I got to make a whole new damn playlist. Um... Bradamy1234, EPMD, that was a, a favorite of my brother. My brother used to buy two copies of an album, one to listen to and one to keep in the plastic. I hope he kept some of those, some of those original tapes. Um, yeah, I got I to gotta make a new playlist. Thank you guys for the inspiration. Coolio, I see that on here. RIP. RIP Coolio. And you know what else is weird? A, a lot of the rappers, or pretty much all of them, <laughs> Frank Powers, a playlist. <laughs> no, a playlist. There would be no play on that list. Um, but uh, I think I lost my train of thought. So whatever, whatever. Shrapnel, JG, you remember Brownside Vatos in the Barrio? No, I do not <laughs> remember them. But well, that sounds like some cool shit I probably would like to listen to. Big L, rest in peace. Rapper's Delight, yep. Diggable Planets, cool like that. Dun, 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 Yeah, that song was a shit. We beat to rap what key beats a lot. We beat to rap what key beats a lot. But I'm cool like that. 
Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, that beat was fucking hard. That beat was hard. Uh, Alien Testosterone, Run DMC, and Aerosmith, Walk This Way. So that uh, that song revived Aerosmith's career, and it helped uh, Ella, or, uh, Run DMC to cross over to a more mainstream audience because it was, what, uh, 84, something like that? And uh, so, you know, Aerosmith, they were, they were, it wasn't the 70s anymore, so they weren't super popular. So I don't know if their agent or somebody uh, suggested that they hook up with Run DMC. And they were both Run DMC and Aerosmith. They're like, who the fuck are these dudes? But then they, you know, and then <laughs> that was it. And Run DMC blew up across the lines, you know, different genres of music and it opened up to a whole new audience. And same with uh, Aerosmith. And that revived their career. Angel Hughes, Nine Inch Nails. I remember, what was that song back in the day, like the late 90s? I Want to Fuck You Like an Animal. I was like, whoa, who are these dudes? <laughs> who are these dudes? Luke Letterly, Devin the Dude. And that's, uh, he's a West Coast dude. Devin the Dude, I remember that. Public Enemy, Nicholas X, that's another one. Uh, was it Heidi Booth? Was it 89? Was it that late? All right. Uh, Public Enemy, another one. My brother was a huge fan of them. All right, all right. Jason uh, Isringhouse, Cool in the Gays. No, it was Cool in the Gang, almost. You're off by a couple letters. <laughs> You're off. A couple letters. Rob Bass. Uh, Alien Robot Ghost Tennessee by uh, uh, Arrested Development. But I am still thirsty. Okay. Oh, Nizzy Sprinkles butt. Buttermilk biscuits. That's a deep cut. I think that's, uh, um, was that Sir Mix-a-Lot? I want to say it's Sir Mix-a-Lot. Buttermilk biscuit. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Heidi. July, Heidi, July 86. Okay. Da, na, na, na. Hey, Patrick Allard, Lil Dicky, he has a freestyle on the Wake Up Show. Oh, my goodness. That shit is hard. Lil Dicky on the Wake Up Show. Oh, my goodness. He kills it. He kills it. He said, I got good pussy at the crib like a house cat. <laughs> like, no. No. Dude, Lil Dicky is fire. Angel, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, Under the Bridge, all that shit. I was in junior high in the early 90s. I think I started sixth grade in like 1992. Um, yeah, I remember uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. What was that song? Um, Take It on the Other Side. Love that song. Kim Hildebrandt. Oh, thank you, Kim. You sound you like you come from regal blood. Uh, thank you for the Hamilton. Whatever happened to Urban Dance Squad? Deeper shade of soul. <laughs> you guys are cutting me deep today. <clears throat> cutting me deep. In the best way possible. Oh, George Benson. Come on now. I remember George Benson fire mission. That's one thing I'm glad about. Uh, music was a big deal in my family growing up. Like my mom would play all kinds of music, uh, gospel music, Motown, Steve, huge Stevie Wonder fan, Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones, all kinds of shit. And then, you know, it was, I loved it growing up as a kid, so I would listen to all types of music, and I had all kinds of different friends, different music, country, metal, all kinds of shit. I'm so glad that I have a, an eclectic mix of types of music that I like, and I wasn't just, you know, tunnel vision into one. Yeah, Adam Smith, bling, bling. That's a that's in the dictionary from Cash Money. Bling, bling is a word in the dictionary. I don't know how I feel about that. Um Let's see. Somebody mentioned LL up here. J954, LL Cool J, The Ripper Strikes Back is the best diss track ever. I don't know, man. That's that's a bold statement because you got no Vaseline. 
You got Nail in the Coffin. Or No Vaseline was Ice Cube versus NWA. Nail in the Coffin, Eminem versus Benzino. You got um, Dollars and Cents, DJ Quick, Diss and MC8. That one is hard. That's a, man, that's a great diss. And then um, you got the, uh, fuck, I can't remember the song, but you got the, the beef between um, LL Cool J and Cannabis in like 2099. That's another epic one. But Dollars and Cents, DJ Quick dissing MC8, holy shit. Because MC8 spells his name E-I-H-T, not E-I-G-H-T, like you're supposed to spell eight. So DJ Quick has a line in a song where he says, E-I-H-T, now shall I continue? Yeah, you left out the G because the G ain't in you. <laughs> oh, fuck. Angel Hughes, cannabis, did he pass? I don't even know. No way. I hope not. Luke Letterly, the click. Oh, man. Ether, that's another one, DMW, 24-7 TV. Ether, Nas versus Jay-Z. Nas fucked him up. But, uh, yeah, man, there's some huge battles out there, some huge beefs. Luke Letterly, the click. You mean E-40 in the click? I met E-40 in part of the click. The only person that was missing was uh, Be Legit. But uh, who was it? Um, D-Shot, Cavi, Muggsy. Uh, Sugar T, e E40. I met all them one time, but uh, Be Legit wasn't there. So dirty when I'm wet that I turn to mud. I smoke purple bud. Anna Marie, In Vogue. In Vogue, probably the greatest female vocalist group ever. Change my mind right now. Who's better? Their 1990 album? Come on. Come on. Their greatest female vocalist group ever, I think. Patrick Hattrick, 50 Cent versus Ja Rule. That was a good beef, but I don't think it was a classic beef because Ja Rule got stomped out. And it wasn't just 50. You had Busta Rhymes, Eminem getting out on that shit too. Um, so that was a group beef. Spice One. Man. 187 proof. Don't, don't, don't. Da -dum -dum. Na -na 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 -na. Oh. <laughs> had two boys named E and J. Oh yeah, Spice One's a shit. And he had uh 187. 187 she wrote on the Minister Society soundtrack. That was MC8. But he had a 187 she wrote on that soundtrack. J954, Ripper Strikes Back was LL versus Cannabis. Okay, so that, that was the name of it. Okay. LL versus Cannabis. But Cannabis had a diss track against LL too. LL told Cannabis, you're just pissed because 99% of your fan base don't exist. <laughs> oh, man. Love it. Alien robot ghost. Thank you for the Hamilton. If you ever had to, if you've ever had to dance for your life, you're in the 80s. I love it, man. Thank you guys. Appreciate this little trip down memory lane. You gave me a lot of good songs to put on my new playlist. Uh, Lala HK too short was fun. He was, he was a little filthy. Lala HK, you listen to too short girl. Pimp C, RIP. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, Space Truck and LLC, Sisters with Voices, SWV. Yeah, they were fire. Uh, thank you, guys. This was great. We're going to do it again. Manana, tomorrow's a Friday. What are you going to do this weekend? And after I'm done here, I'm going to be cranking out a bunch of uh, shorts on YouTube. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, Raquita Johnson. Uh, Mickey is going to make an appearance, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. And uh, that's all I got, people. Over two hours today. How nice. You were great. I was great. We were great. But you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell, because every time it rings, a piece of shit lefty cries. Utilize the link tree link. Get your ass over to JerichoGreen.net and MyGreenGear.com. 
I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.